You may have heard that iTunes is going away. I'm Ice Scour, and I'm going to tell you all the details about that that you need to know. Let's get started. So, at, recently at WWDC, Apple announced they're getting rid of iTunes. And they showed this explanation, which kind of explains how complicated iTunes is right now, which I totally agree with. So here's this. And it really shows how complicated iTunes is and how they just keep adding things to it. So let's look at what all those things are on iTunes. So you've got music. You can listen to music you own physically, you bought, or stream music from Apple Music. Then you've got watching movies that you own physically, digitally, that you rented, and then same with TV shows, physically, digitally rented, and all these different things instead of iTunes. Listening to podcasts, interesting one there. And then you've got listening to audiobooks, which really shows they're just adding random things in. And then syncing, backing up your phone, a pretty important one. So yeah, those are the things that there are there. There's so many different functions of this one app. So what they did is they split it up into three or kind of four apps. Music, podcasts, Apple TV... And then books, I believe, was already there, but it gains more functionality now. So let's look first at the music app. This pretty much takes the functionality from the music things. So watching music, uh, streaming music that you've bought, uh, Apple Music subscription into the music app, as well as music you've already purchased, and the option to purchase more music. Then we can look at the Apple TV app, which combines TV shows and movies, and everything from the iOS TV app. So you've got your third party things, you've got your new Apple TV subscriptions that are coming up, Apple TV Plus, all of those things from Apple's March event, I believe. Those are pretty cool to see. And then we've got podcasts for listening to podcasts. And uh, syncing is really interestingly done. You do it in the Finder app which is Windows equivalent of File Explorer. So you look through your files and then you've got the option to do stuff with your iPhone, which totally just makes sense. It's pretty intuitive to do that, it seems like for me. And I love that idea there. There's also Apple Books, which you can use for reading books, listening to audiobooks, those things. And don't worry, iTunes gift cards still apply for buying things because all of these apps have stores for buying things. And I think this right here is really awesome to have because iTunes is really pretty complicated right now and this just makes it a lot simpler to use. A lot like they did in iOS, splitting it up with you've got like TV, music, all of those different apps on iOS, they're now doing on Mac OS. And you're not losing any features. All of your music you already have, you will have. All of your iTunes credits you already have. They're just splitting it up to make it simpler and I appreciate that. Except, I'm a Windows user. And sadly, if you use Windows, nothing will be changing. Which means that exact same iTunes you're used to on Windows will still be there. So this iTunes interface that you've been using for syncing music, all of that on Windows, it stays the same. So we will still have that confusing iTunes there. But it does mean that it won't be changing. So those are what we'll be seeing with the death of iTunes. And that will be coming on macOS Catalina in September to applicable devices, but not to Windows. I'm Ice Thanks for watching. Bye.